Dude, when I say to you that your speech was what played in my mind over the ensuing days, I loved it so much. There was an amazing line Julio had, which I'll have to share, where he said, Sierra and I hang out a lot. We go out on dates. And uh, Francis is one of my best friends, but Sierra is my fucking boy. (laughs) Sierra is my boy. And only Julio can deliver that line. Welcome back to Oops the Podcast. All right, lots to unpack here. I got something for you. Please. Julio, Julio, I don't know where you came up with that idea. Dude, this guy was a huge turkey. What is this, Japan? Which is one of the reasons why I hadn't told you about it. No, and I also just assumed you were saving it for the pod if you were going to tell me. Yeah, yeah. Which, of course you were. Oh, yeah. Here we are. On a very special Oops! The Podcast, I am Francis Ellis, joined as ever by Julio, still kicking, (laughs) Colorado. Here we go, baby. Boy, am I glad to see you alive and well, amigo. Dude, good to see you alive and well. This is crazy. Uh, Here we are, um, Barstool HQ. That's it. Recording our first Oops! The Podcast outside of our OG studio. Yeah. Dude, I always think that when in an ongoing format, it's really important and good to like shake it up. Mm-hmm. And we've been pretty good at that. Sure have. We <laughs> we were doing our thing. We had the pandemic. We briefly were with another network. We were doing our thing again. Um, you moved apartments. We changed studios, and now here we are. And it's just been a nice ride, dude. You know, there have been, been three or three major constants, I would say, across the the lifespan of Oops the podcast. One, the dog. <laughs> Two, Sierra. Yeah. I, three, Kojai. Wait, who? Oh, Hill Dog. I thought the dog was Hill Kojai. Dog. <laughs> no, the ladies and the ladies and the pooch. And Chris, dude. Chris. Chris has been constant. Chris, Chris, Chris has you a mic me. now. Like a one that's on, too. Whoa. Yeah. Dude, you're talking very producerly, yeah, too. Bring that thing in closer. Yeah, you, got you guys it. can't yeah. even hear me. Attaboy. But I sound good in these. Damn. These cans. Damn, bro. We are geeking out a little because we've got all this cool, awesome gear. Barstool is a well-oiled machine, a podcast uh, supernova in a way. <laughs> and I, you know, this is everyone's first time in here, yeah. I would think. I mean, I'm only on day four of my job back yeah. here. Uh, and it's been a whirlwind for me, so I'm still figuring out where things are. Is it different? Very. Interesting. Very and, different. And, and just from a personnel perspective or a vibe perspective, like what is the difference? Like the some of the differences. Well, let's put it this way: if before the bar stool that I worked at was a uh, a caterpillar, it is now a monarch butterfly. <laughs> it has undergone a, a it has molted <laughs> and shed layers of skin to emerge stronger yeah. and sleeker and more advanced, and there have been you know, people that didn't know how to do the job were, were kicked out or whatever. And then people that replaced them who were much more adept and the tech, you know, the camera equipment, the sound equipment, the res- reserving of podcast rooms. Yeah. It used to just be like, we're going in there next. Right. right. Now there's a friggin', <laughs> you know, electronic <laughs> sign up sheet. We're um, going in there next. And it's, you know, the, e- everything from the top to the bottom just seems like a, a total well-run media company now. Yeah, so yeah. I, I've been kind of in awe of that, and it's been really fun for me to see uh, and now to share with you guys and to, to share with our, our adoring, wonderful audience who we're so glad you guys are still with us for, uh, I don't know, what we call it, Generation 3 of Oops! The Podcast? Yeah, I guess. Mm. Oops! 3.0. Yeah. The merger is, is vinyl. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. I'm happy to be here. This is fun. Obviously, Chris, the OG, Ryan, the uh, the new G, oh, the new G, but the OG as yeah. well at this point. The yeah. boys in the mix, and uh, dude, thanks for uh, you know, letting allowing us to get caught up in your gale. Oh man, I, and, I, it's uh, I, that's to benefit. A, that's too nice of a way to put it. I, I I would say thank you to you all for taking a leap of faith with me as we held hands, and leapt from the the deck. <laughs> of our trusty old boat onto the <laughs> the gleaming hull of this this sleek old yacht. Yeah. That is uh is definitely gonna carry us on to more promised seas. 
So, um, guys, this is sick. And it, it, I would say it coincides perfectly with an enormous moment, uh, transition moment uh, in, in my life, in your life. Um, you know, we are, this is our first episode that we've recorded since before my wedding. Mm -hmm. uh, appreciate everyone listening to all those uh, pre-recorded apps we did to keep, you know, I went on my honeymoon didn't really feel like we could do Skype or Zoom episodes from... Yeah, dude. No. And also, bro, fuck that. <laughs> Mozambique. It's your honeymoon, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's so, time that should be spent making love. Yeah. Making love. <laughs> as we, as they called it uh, for the gorillas, push, push in the bush. <laughs> A little jiggy, jiggy, as the guides would call it. Um, push, push in the bush. Push, push in the bush. So many jokes and so many awesome things to tell you all about, to yeah. tell you guys about. But let's uh, let's let's rewind it all the way back to the old wedding. To the let's, old wedding. Let's start with the wedding. So, dude, first of all, let me say one more thing. I'm sorry. This is an, an interesting thing because now it's been a bit since we've recorded, mm -hmm. right? And now here we are. We're back. The first time recording is in a new place. You are now married. Mm. It feels like a fucking parallel universe. Dude. Yeah. It feels like all the same characters, but like a slightly different story. Yeah. And it's super weird. I'm excited for it to get familiar again, though. Yeah, I agree, dude. It's great. I, I was really looking forward to seeing you guys as this grounding influence in my life. These familiar friends who can, you know, throw me a... A lifeline of familiarity uh, because things have been very crazy for me. Do you um, find us gr grounding? 100%. The boys? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this group chat we have is probably the most active one I have on a daily basis. <laughs> uh, you're the three, pe the three people outside of my, my wife that I see the most, I would say. So, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Are you kidding? Cool, man. You know, I call you when I get shit faced. <laughs> <laughs> You're like my parents when I'm in the adult camp. <laughs> like if I'm homesick in during the afternoon, I'm yeah, calling you. Great. Hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, just checking out. <laughs> 7 p.m. call from Francis. Yeah, it means you've probably been hitting it hard on the golf course. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah. Okay. So sorry. So I, I interrupted the let's go back in time. No, bit. you didn't. I mean, uh, there, I'm sure I'm racing through all of this, but we have so much to get to and so much to un uncover. Um, so yeah, so I got married. The weekend of Francis's wedding. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, I actually stepped on that flight. And when I touched down in Portland, I think I was in the lead in the flight competition. Is that right? But I'm, I am now way behind again because yeah. we took like 17 flights. If you're a new listener, Julio and I have a, a year-long competition about who can take the most flights. Uh, <laughs> I don't really know why, but this is something we care a lot about. We both do. And I, I can't pretend like we're doing it for content. This is something that matters to me yeah. now. And uh, we text each other with updates. Um <laughs> And uh, we were just about tied, or you had you just taken like the lead. I was like one or two ahead of you, but now you're like seven, six or seven ahead of me, I think. Yeah. So in the span of going to Maine for the wedding, uh, and then coming back from Africa from honeymoon, I took, which was I think about three weeks, three little under three weeks maybe. I took fourteen flights. Oh my god, dude. Fourteen. That's, That's a lot of flights. So yeah. the, some of the ground rules, like any flight in any aircraft counts. Um, and you're as <laughs> and, and gentlemen's bet, you're not allowed to take flights you wouldn't have taken. Yeah. So like you're not allowed to take a shittier flight with layovers if it doesn't make sense. That's you know right. What I mean, that's right. No, nothing that you wouldn't have done without the competition. I was in um, and we'll get to the honeymoon, but I was in uh flying from kenya from nairobi out into the masai mara which is the big game reserve and sort of national park in in kenya and we got on this little prop plane with a bunch of other people going out into the bush and they let us know you know that there were two camp drop-offs what does that mean meaning oh, we like took off landed oh whoa and dropped the first group of people off and then we took off again and then dropped us off and i texted julio for a ruling counts and he goes he just wrote back counts oh <laughs> man <laughs> absolutely counts <laughs> and i was like this guy doesn't even want to win <laughs> he doesn't want to win absolutely counts he I'm a gave, man of honor, dude. He gave me the helicopter transport from <laughs> Mozambique to the island, yep. which was nine minutes. 
counts. And back, each one of those counted. I mean, if you're in a helicopter, Dude, that's it's got to count. It counts, bro. Would it count if it were a sightseeing helicopter ride? You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it has to be transport. I would say, I, uh, like okay, you're going I'm fine around with that. New York City. I think that's, I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't see myself doing a yeah. sightseeing helicopter hot, ride. Hot air balloon in that case would not count. I didn't count hot air <laughs> balloon. Francis did go into hot air balloon. I did do hot air balloon. <laughs> yeah, agreed. I think I think it has to be for transport. Yeah. No sightseeing. Agreed. Flights. Agreed. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> back to the wedding. So uh, flew to Maine. That's where we had it. Uh, my house, that I my, my childhood home, where my parents still live, in Freeport, Maine. Absolutely lovely. Weather was a little touch and go. Uh, it was it was shifting a lot from a week ahead. We were looking at the weather report, and it looked like it was going to be torrential thunderstorms on the day of the wedding. We were a little scared about that. Then, as a couple days went by, it it shifted to being the day before which was a bummer because we had a cool thing set up for the Friday before the, the night before the wedding. Oh, like, like it was supposed to be at the same venue, right? But there was like that you, we ended up doing the rain plan or no, we did everything the same oh. plan. Oh, so, but Friday we didn't, we were going to oh. the boat ride that so we nighttime, did. So it was exactly the same. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. So w- we did a boat ride in the afternoon on Friday. Then Friday night, we did like the rehearsal dinner, I guess. That's right. right? Mm-hmm. And then the next day of the wedding, obviously. Yeah. So we knew, we thought, okay, well, crap, we're going to miss the Friday boat ride thing. That w- That's really too bad. But we'd rather have our, obviously, our wedding without rain. Mm-hmm. But then miraculously, sure enough, day of the wedding, uh, the boat ride, the window of good weather uh, extended to allow us to do this really cool schooner ride in the, har- in the Portland Harbor, which was like, Straight fun. out of a fucking Land's End catalog. It was really funny. And so I thought that I had dressed in some way appropriately for it. I arrive and I see everybody dress a little more sort of like New England, timeless, preppy, preppy, like, you know, Jackie, Jackie Kennedy, Kennedy type yeah. of vibe, which I know is what you guys had said somehow don't, don't, I like don't you guys had said this that it was Sierra, okay, Sierra. Had I, that, I that somehow, was her brainchild dude I somehow like didn't get the memo like I wore something that I thought was like festive and fun and like yeah appropriate but not like super duper specific not like Nantucket weekend in 1967 yeah but the immediate reaction I got I show up I say hi to Sierra she goes oh I guess you didn't see the mood board oh man <laughs> well I hope that that is like, a little yeah. bit of a self dig from her because mood board makes it funny i think like she was i i don't think she cared no i think she's kidding yeah i think she was like busting my balls like i know her well enough to like know how she is she's like straightforward but she's not like you know what i mean i also think that if she if she had meant to make you feel bad she would have said something like i guess you didn't get the memo i think but she may have say, i think she did say that actually oh no <laughs> I don't, to be honest, yeah, I don't know how she felt about it. I no, think, I don't think she cares. I think she, like, it, I think that it, whether or not she was, like, disappointed, I think she gave me a free pass. 100%. She pass she's just, she, you know, you can't, she's chill. I, yeah, I, I'm okay. going to give her the absolute benefit of the doubt okay. on that. Well, I mean, she doesn't, I need the benefit of the doubt because I'm the one who didn't listen to the rules. But there were, I don't think it was rules so much, you know, as uh, just a suggestion. I don't know. But I get it. I mean, ladies at their weddings, they have strong ideas a lot of the Mm -hmm. time about the way that they think things are going to look and want them to look. So sure enough, we we get on this awesome old wooden ship. Oh, yeah. An old wooden ship (laughs) and took (laughs) off out of the New York uh, sort of the Portland Main Harbor um, with lots of Maine Beer Company and coolers of drinks and rosé and fucking charcuterie parts and crudite and it, they unfurled the sails they cut the motor and all of a sudden we were we were actually sailing and it was really pretty magical and we just did that for a couple of hours and tootled around and then uh came back in went back to the hotel and i'm telling you we walked from the dock of the boat into our hotel and the second i got under the eaves of the hotel the skies opened up and a thunderstorm of biblical proportions <laughs> began. If we had been at sea, like our lives would have all been at risk. We'd be dead. 
Yeah, it was really the, one of the most intense storms. So much so, I'm pretty sure that like in the hotel that we were staying in, the sewage... The, the hotel over, flooded. Flo- the, the hotel flooded with sewage. The, the hotel smelled like shit <laughs> because the ground floor had been flooded with sewage or something. Yeah. And so they told you in the elevators, don't go to the ground floor. Go to the, the next floor and don't walk all the way down because there's standing water down there. That happened like an hour after we got off the boat. Yeah, it was crazy. Bro. It was awesome to watch. But it was also cool because on the roof on the rooftop <laughs> I love watching a really violent storm. Me too. Dude, the rooftop bar <laughs> was designed in a way that it was open. Yeah. And it, it could stay open during the storm. Yeah. So like we were sitting there like watching this storm happen and feeling the air, mm-hmm. but like in, in safety. I was throwing back a lot of cocker spaniels. It was quite nice. I was throwing a lot of them back. I said to myself, I'm not gonna waste my sobriety on a good storm. Yeah, dude, the es- the espresso martinis were flowing like water, dude. They sure were. Someone else had a, a hotel tab open. I was the bra- I was the groom. <laughs> Ooh, uh, not paying for drinks. Ooh. Just and then throw another one on yeah, there. Another one. <laughs> Whoever's paying is paying. Get on there, bro. No. Um, and then we went over to the rehearsal dinner, which was really lovely. Nice restaurant. Uh, a lot of good speeches. A lot of great speeches. A lot speeches. of funny speeches. Some very funny speeches. So let me ask you, dude. I, I felt like... You, you, and correct me if I'm wrong about this, but I, I felt as if maybe you thought that you were getting crushed. Oh, I got smoked. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> I could just sort of tell. Like, and to be honest, like, part of it is my, my friends <laughs> roasted the shit out of me, and then Sierra's friends roasted the shit out of me, <laughs> and then everyone had only nice things to say about her. <laughs> To the point where I was like, why is this woman marrying me? You seemed like all you seemed like almost hurt. You know, <laughs> Not- I, I couldn't be because to me that would have been so hypocritical. I've spoken at a lot of weddings and a lot of rehearsal dinners for those very same people that were speaking on our behalf. And they expected me to do some roasting. And it's always what I've done. Totally. Mm-hmm. So totally. to then be, you know, miffed is a very Michael Scott thing. Where remember in that episode, he sets up his own roast and then gets upset because people yeah. are roasting him. Classic. Um, and so I was sitting there being like, ha, 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 ha. yeah, Just being like, you're a comedian. They're expecting you to hold it together. You can't get upset. No, but it it was great. Um, and and flattering, you know, as they say, you know what I mean. It, it was a flattering, yeah. like flattering roast. And to be honest, I didn't think that they were too too no, bad. No, not at all. It was okay. Yeah. Like, uh, and yeah, man, I enjoyed. I thought the the bar, a couple of the bars were very very high that weekend. Yeah. Yep. One of them being the level of speech quality. I felt was very very high. Yeah. Um, including uh, the couple that introduced you guys gave a sort of like duet speech, which yeah. I've actually never even seen. They before. crushed that. And they really, they executed it quite well. They I did thought. really well back and forth. Yeah. It was really good. They've got good chemistry. They've been married a long time. <laughs> so the, the the speech quality was quite high. And I also thought that the food quality was quite mm. high the entire weekend. Well, that's what, that's what, that's what you get from one being in Maine, mm-hmm. right? At the end of the summer. Uh, seafood is incredibly fresh, the vegetables, all that amazing, but also from having a slightly smaller wedding mm-hmm. because it's impossible to serve food for 150, 200 people at the same time and have it be good. Interesting. The quality control just goes out the window. You can't have fish entrees come out for 200 people at the same time and have them all be hot. Interesting. It just, it just gets cold. Yeah. It's too hard. Um, whereas we had 95, 96 people at our wedding. Mm-hmm. I think it's a much more manageable job for a catering company. Yeah, it was quite good. Uh, the drink, there was always a cocktail uh, situation set up at all times. Yeah. Which you love to see. I had a lot to drink <laughs> over the course of the, of the weekend. I was drinking a lot. Dude, honestly, like uh, physically what we put ourselves through, because Francis and I both went on very big trips immediately after, <laughs> yeah. literally immediately. So, so immediately after that I was running around Portland, Maine during the day of your wedding looking for crisp brand new hundred dollar bills because I specifically <laughs> needed to bring those with yeah, me. Dude. Spoiler alert. I was in Afghanistan. Uh, we'll get into that on <laughs> in a later episode. Yeah. But I was running around town trying to find new, those new face hunted. It's, it's, it's crazy. You mentioned that because I didn't know this, that when Oops. we, when we went to Africa, they wouldn't accept 
bills that were printed prior to 2013. And then even then they would specifically ask you if you had ones after 2017. Yeah, interesting. They look at the fucking serial numbers. Yeah. It's weird, dude. I've noticed that and like there's a lot of weird stuff about money in different places. Some places like if there's the tiniest tear in a mm. bill, they won't exchange it. Yeah. Shit like that. So I don't know. Yeah. But interesting. So but Yeah, dude, physically like what a crazy undertaking. Yeah. Like so earlier that week, dude, that was one of the craziest few weeks of my life. Earlier that week, I was at a, I flew down to Washington, D.C. to go to a Bad Bunny concert. Mm. Got obviously hammered. Mm -hmm. Come back to the city. And then <laughs> I think the weekend before that, too. Oh, dude, the weekend before that, I was on the road. I was like in New Orleans, mm -hmm. obviously getting hammered there, too. Then go then to your wedding, get hammered again. Yep. How are you going to avoid that? And then some of the most challenging flights we've ever had to take, probably. <laughs> yeah. For you, the literal day after the wedding ended. Yeah. And I at least had a buffer day. But, dude, what a crazy – I'm happy that we survived it. I, I'm, I'm surprised we're here. Yeah, and, and also with the impending sort of like – knowledge that we have this huge career transition yeah. for both of us more so for you like com more comprehensively but like we have to be back on time yeah and there's a lot that can go wrong have to be back on time. <laughs> when you're five thousand miles away or whatever yeah. a lot can go wrong dude that's exactly so right i'm just glad we're here dude yeah man <laughs> me too we, this is a, a true reunion <laughs> uh it it feels like a reunion of 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 POWs that somehow <laughs> like are have reunited in America after their ordeal, <laughs> but which we signed up for. So, uh, um, okay. To go back to the wedding though, yes, yes. cause we have so much to cover. There's so much funny stuff that happened. Um, so that was Friday night. Speeches were great. Then everyone came for sort of a welcome drink thing. And then we went back sort of hotel passed out next morning. Uh, wake up, I went and got coffee with my buddy and I'm, um, you know, it was my wedding day. Crazy. Saturday morning. Woke up my wedding day. You were playing it super cool. You were playing it so cool that at one point, like the, the like groomsmen kind of were together and like, there was no, like no one knew who was going to take the picture. And Francis was like, dude, I don't care. And somebody was like, Francis, we have to take a picture. And you're like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was that like a reflex or were you just that like, uh, chill about it you know it's a great question because i found myself subtly revolting against so many things i've chafed at at prior weddings and desperately trying to differentiate ours from mm, those yeah. and 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 really to lay a veil of relaxation and casualness over the entirety of the proceedings to my detriment mm -hmm. where there were definitely some moments that I thought were too chill. Uh, for example, uh, we didn't do any sort of a rehearsal of the procession for the ceremony and didn't think that we needed to do the thing where you walk the bridesmaids down the aisle, mostly because we weren't having anyone stand up there mm -hmm. uh, with us. And what happened was I didn't know when I was supposed to go. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that I was supposed to walk across with my parents. Mm -hmm. So I just walked up to the front <laughs> and stood up there like an idiot. <laughs> and then my dad came running across and was like, Fran, Fran, <laughs> we need you. <laughs> and I was like, did Sierra die? What has... <laughs> What's happened? No. And he was like, no, you're not supposed to walk us. So then I walked out of the wedding, you know, and and walked uh, back across the bridge and then and then got my parents and walked with them. And it had all of this air of a little bit of a panic at that point, <laughs> which I regret. I have uh, I, I, I won't say that I don't regret that. And all of that would have been sorted if we'd just been given a little bit of a briefing mm -hmm. uh, on how things were to proceed. But of course, none of it mattered. It yeah, all melted away when, when Sierra floated mm. down the aisle like a vision. Chris, did you cry? I was crying the whole time. Uh. Really? Not, not like a heavy cry, just like tears in my eyes the whole time. We were roasting Chris about how he was going to cry for sure. Like yeah. on an earlier oh, episode, we were trying to think of a task to give him to distract him. <laughs> yeah. But I gave him his privacy. I didn't look back to That's see if good. he was crying. Oh, you crying? That's good. <laughs> That's such a that Crying Ryan? Were you crying? You gotta I don't get Ryan think a Ryan mic. has a mic. 
Oh, huh. you want to come sit next to me? Ryan, yeah, come just on get in there Ryan. real tight. Be, Still be figuring pals. it out in the stew. No, yeah. but I had that pit in my stomach. You had a pit. I had a pit. You were pitted so. up. You were a little peach. Yeah. The boys, yeah. the boys bonded yeah. this this weekend. I learned that Ryan sleeps with one pillow. Yeah. <laughs> which I just think is like a pretty big red flag. As opposed to how many? Multiple. You sleep with one pillow too. Yeah. Wow, that makes sense. I sleep on my back. I do too. Oh. Unbelievable. What do you, how do you sleep? I sleep with three pillows. I sleep on my stomach and I, one of my legs is at a 90 degree angle over one of the pillows. <laughs> and I also have a teddy bear. <laughs> I'm not joking. Yeah. We're the red flag. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking nine year old. <laughs> Chris, what's your sleeping situation? I do one pillow for my head and I use like a body pillow and I, I like that. Kind yeah. of like yeah. you. Got it. Yeah. This is lining up perfectly. I'm yeah. Gonna... <laughs> yeah. So. Let me let me just back us yeah, up yeah, though really it. quick to the um after the, the big morning event I had arranged a, a lovely oh, yeah. lunch Dude. for the groomers at uh, <laughs> at at Eventide <laughs> Oyster Company, which was um an, is an awesome restaurant in Portland, Maine. Uh, years ago, it won like a James Beard Award. It's fucking sick. It's so good. And and to the point where this is there's no better feeling. We walked in. We had they don't normally do reservations. We Sierra and I had gone up there a couple months prior to the wedding. We sat at the bar, we spoke to them, asked if there was any chance we could do a big group lunch on the day of our wedding, and they said, Normally we don't allow reservations at peak hours, but we'll make an exception since it's your wedding. They had reserved a table for twelve mm -hmm. uh in, in this it's a very small restaurant. And so all twelve of us Tiny walked over from the hotel and we get to the restaurant and there is a line of people from the entrance to the restaurant down the block and then turned onto the next block and like you know 50 yards down that block and we just sauntered past oh, yeah. all those poor people <laughs> waiting to see if they could when are we gonna Let's put our name on the list. Yeah, it's like a minimum two hour wait. We actually tried to get in there. We tried to go the next day and we couldn't because the wait was too long. Yeah. And we walked right in. Huge group, which obviously I'm looking at my guys and instantly I'm like, all right, the food is now going to taste 26% better. <laughs> by walking by a line of that size <laughs> and walking straight in, you, it just increases the... Oh shit, this place is fucking elite. You know what I mean? Totally, totally. And we walk in, we sit down, we're boisterous. The boys are jacked up. <laughs> fucking round of cocktails, dirty Drinks martinis. Are flowing, dude. Jesus. Dirty martinis, uh, spicy mezcal margaritas, you know, beers, anything you want. I just man up and, and, and do an order for the whole table. Everybody gets a lobster roll. Yeah, that was that was like the most pro wow. move. O lobster roll for every single person, and then everything else was family style. Everything else is fine, but everyone deserves this lobster roll. Best lobster roll I've ever had by far. Yeah, the brown butter lobster roll from Eventide on a steamed, uh, steamed bun. It's like a pork bow bun. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Dude, it is crazy. It's crazy. It is the, it's like one of the best things I've ever eaten, I think. I agree. I agree with it's that. It's fucking good as shit. We did that. You know, I was trying to figure out, okay, it's my wedding day. How much can or should I drink? And I almost think that I just monitored my drinking perfectly, which is what kept my nerves at bay. Ah, interesting. So what we took some sort of like pickleback shot oh my or God. something. What was that? So I ordered these oyster shooters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they bring you an oyster on a shot glass. But the shot glass they bring you is way too much liquor. And it was yeah. sort of this like spicy Tabasco shot mm. of tequila with Tabasco. It was delicious. Oh, man. I loved it. It was a lot, especially yeah. after oh, the yeah. oyster. Dude, a it, lot. And we have this one friend who's hysterical, and he tried to take it and got half of it down, and then he went, <laughs> 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 He let out one of those like goat sounds, <laughs> and we all fucking we laughed. Died. If if there were a hashtag joke yeah. of the weekend, it would have been that sound. <laughs> oh my god, it was so funny, dude. Um, and then uh, so, so, dude, it was nice for me because okay, I gave the best man speech. Yeah. Um, which, which like you know I like if it was just the 
I don't, I don't know where I'm going with this. But anyway, I gave the best man speech. So <laughs> at I ha- the ceremony. At the ceremony. Later that night. Um, which is, yeah, the, the person who speaks at the wedding. Yeah. Itself. That was my responsibility. So I have to like not get fucked up. That's right. You have to keep your shit together too. Which was actually nice because as I had said before, how, with how challenging physically the week prior, the week after was about to be, it was nice to give myself a break during the day. Mm-hmm. Um, plus I don't like day drinking to begin with and I needed to not be fucked up for that speech. Right. That would have been, the stakes are fairly high. Mm-hmm. I needed to at least show that I took it seriously. Right. That's half the battle. Totally. Right? Showing that you respect the occasion. I think so. But dude, I mean, I, I I didn't say anything when you were talking about the bar of the speeches being high. So so we can we can kind of jump now to, you know, that that lunch was great. Then we all got on the bus. We went up to uh Freeport from Portland and uh sort of got some the, then then the guys just end up waiting around. Mm-hmm. But guys, just wait. Throw in the vortex. We pulled out the vortex, which we'd <laughs> bought to donate to a children's school in Africa, That's which nice. we ended up giving to them heavily used. Because not <laughs> only did the boys toss that thing around to sort of kill time, but we then, Sierra and I, had a lot of fun with it in Africa. Yeah, I saw, I saw. Um, And right. so we, uh, we were throwing the vortex around, waiting. Finally, the ladies arrived. We all get stationed. We go over. We do the ceremony. Uh, Sierra looked incredible. It was, it was truly magical. Um, I thought the vows, you know, Luke Marcus crushed the officiating, Mm -hmm. uh, and he's a Marine pilot, wore his dress blues, you know, gave the whole proceeding. Did you ask him to do that? Kind of. Yeah. 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 (laughs) I was hoping so. Uh, yeah. Cause it would, I like, I was like, oh, Francis must've asked him. Cause it would, it would be like bizarre to just do it without being nudged. Especially for such a casual wedding in the woods. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and he was like, he, yeah. It's not like we got married on an aircraft carrier. Like, (laughs) (laughs) you know, (laughs) it wasn't exactly Uh, the, the costume of the, of the, (laughs) tone <laughs> but um yeah so he was great and then our vows were i don't know probably my favorite part they were of, really good of the ceremony really sierra was so funny <laughs> she kind of roasted me a little bit in the vows and uh was really really sweet uh very moving and then i had spent a lot of time writing mine and a lot of people told me including guys that like they don't cry at weddings but that during the vows they they choked up a little yeah that's very sweet which i wish i could have looked out yeah. and seen all the people crying <laughs> because to me that's like when a comedian hears laughter like that's the response yeah, you yeah. want that's a kill for vows <laughs> that's like a kill. look out there everyone's passing around tissue boxes <laughs> somebody's getting up to leave because they're going too hard <laughs> you know that to me i'd be like i'm fucking killing yeah. this crowd yeah. Um, so that w- anyway, then we did some pictures for a little bit. Pretty so cool. I, I had a couple of fun things to add to this. Yeah. So your dad at one point, right after the pictures had finished, he corralled the entire group of guys to go look at his man cave. <laughs> 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 you guys want to come see the man cave? Sure. Yeah. Now, like 12 guys are following your dad into yeah. his man cave. And he's like, there's a picture of Francis. Uh-huh. Uh, there's that. He's like, yeah, this is where I just come to. We're like, sick. Dude. <laughs> yeah. It was cool. Oh, sorry, he's yeah. very proud of it. Yeah, yeah. It's sick. Yeah. It's also cool to see, like, I love, and I've seen a few of people I've encountered in my life have this kind of situation, but like they find this property that's sort of like a diamond in the rough. And then over years, they create this amazing thing. And like, that's, what it was what your guys situation up there is like exactly uh i don't know if i've told this story but when we moved to maine when i was four years old we rented a house uh in a town called cumberland while we looked for a land land to build our our forever house on and uh we found the land because some guy who'd been a hoarder he was a legitimate like hoarder kind of a low-life guy had all this <laughs> land and was just using it as like a junkyard uh, for his crap. And I'm talking, you know, rusted out motorcycles that had the wheels removed. Uh, bags, full bags of trash, which he had thrown in the ravines and were half exploded, filled with rolling rock cans and Arizona iced tea cans. <laughs> Painting a really good picture. You know, that. all kinds of just nonsense. Um and, and I remember this very vividly because as a boy, my parents gave me a, a like a 
children's tool kit for Christmas when I was like six or seven. And I just used to go out to these rusted out motorcycles and just like work on the bikes, as I called it, <laughs> uh, where I would just unscrew shit. I didn't know what I was doing, you yeah, know, yeah. but I'd pretend like I was an auto body right. technician. That's fun. Yeah. Um, goofing around. And uh, anytime I could even like unscrew something, I felt like I had accomplished yeah, something, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, but then they would also, my parents would also pay us like a dollar an hour to fill up <laughs> bags of trash from the ravines. That's amazing. And they right. were these buried bottles of, you know, beer uh, that were deep in the mud and you'd, you'd feel them under your foot and you'd pull them out and you'd fill up a bag and carry it to the top and then start over. You guys are like parole roadside yeah. workers it felt, wearing orange vests. I mean, making stabbing way paper. under minimum wage yeah, yeah. as children doing labor. <laughs> um, but the result was that over the next couple of years, we cleaned up the property and, and made it this lovely place. And then my parents, you know, over the many years since have sort of slowly taken on a different project every year. It's like so cool, man. Clear out this area, plant this area, do this and... and to the degree that my sister had her wedding there a year ago and the place was was singing, you yeah, know, it it's, was it's beautiful. Bro. It was a, a wedding venue. And so we said, obviously, we want to do the same. And, and again, it was just in peak paradise form. Yeah. And th I think that is one of the things that people forget about, about the boomers, the boomer generation. They're just like a much more patient generation, mm -hmm. like to be able to, cr to like create a property like that slowly over time, you're picking away at it. Like Tim Robbins trying yeah. to escape from fucking Shawshank <laughs> slowly, but yeah. surely putting a dent in it. One, one year you build a barn, it takes five years. Then the next yeah. year you work on that area and that area. If you were to try to build that property now, like it w you wouldn't even be able to afford it. No, it would just take, you know, it's like such a great way to create, value and like it's just the idea of undertaking a project like that makes me want to immediately jump off a building <laughs> like, i don't think i could ever do it man yeah i don't think I, ha I have it i have what it takes no but you know i think that's the way things were for their families and growing up and, totally. and and it is a generational shift we are the generation of immediate gratification totally uh and how can we get things as fast as possible and then move on to the next thing we want so anyway, the, the, the party started, we walked in, you know, band strikes up a tune. We do our first dance. People settle in speeches, start speeches were great. Your parents speech was great. Really nice. Dude, Le bulldozer Rouge. Yeah. I'd forgotten that my mom, <laughs> that was their nickname. We used to go to France when I was a kid because my mom was a, 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 a taught French and in the summers, I remember a couple summers when I was a kid, we went and uh, as a young boy, I was like three, uh, we, we we knew this family that my mom was friends with and they nicknamed me uh, Le Bulldozer Rouge, the Red Bulldozer, because <laughs> I was constantly moving and just a, a, a force and all my friends loved that and everyone loved that. And I have thought since then, this is really tragic, but if <laughs> my mom passes away someday, that as an homage to her, I might get a little red bulldozer tattoo. Oh, I like that. Somewhere like that on my body. I like that. Um, Very but sweet. yeah. So uh, okay, the 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 ceremony's beautiful. Now we can relax. Mm -hmm. We're past the tense stuff, and we get to just enjoy it. And it's just a, it's just like a, it's like a hall of fame induction. <laughs> like you know, you're getting in. And yeah. everyone's there to to honor you being, nick, <laughs> you know, ushered in to Cooperstown. And uh, <laughs> they're celebrating your body of work. You know, they've been together four years. When they first came into the league, I yeah. thought, these young rookies. <laughs> um, and sure enough, Julio gets up there to do the last speech, which we had chosen specifically because we were worried he was going to be impossible to follow and boy were we right <laughs> dude when i say to you that your speech was what played pleasantly just fragments in my mind over the ensuing days i loved it so uh, dude, much dude, i loved it I'm so glad, much bro. where all my other friends roasted the shit out of me <laughs> you truly honored both me and sierra there were things that I didn't know, as I said, <laughs> as you had said you were going to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Some amazing just 
things of, of, of someone that has become so close to you over the last three years of your life and knows the scope of your relationship because that's just about exactly as long as Sierra and I had been together prior to the wedding and uh, you've spent so much time with her, which was really mm -hmm. special. There was an amazing line Julio had, which <laughs> I'll have to share where he said, um, you know, Sierra and I hang out a lot. We go <laughs> out on dates and uh francis is one of my best friends but sierra is my fucking boy <laughs> sierra is my boy and only julio can deliver that line we all erupted um it was so fucking funny dude i was my mouth hurt because my even when the moments i wasn't laughing out loud i was smiling so big um i was just beaming and and loving it and oh god so many great moments even even when you, you had a joke that a lot of other people had had yeah and you were just like looking at your notes and you're like all right <laughs> yeah. everyone's beating that to death so i'm not oh, yeah. doing it and it's just like a classic comedian no other people would do that at that wedding because that's like a comics thing you know <laughs> um and that was hysterical it was just man you just killed it you nailed it and i also loved how because everyone was like kind of making fun of me in the other speeches <laughs> for like not being able to hold a job for very long and like <laughs> kind of being like, yeah, he's, uh, he's not like us, you know, you can't <laughs> succeed. And you were like, by the way, um, in comedy terms, Francis is killing it. Yeah. <laughs> he is the, the, the like, and then you cited our very successful friends in my yeah, friend group. Yeah. He's like the ex of comedy, right, right, right. which was a great joke <laughs> and put them all in their place. So it was um, also funny because that one particular friend, I mentioned him twice in the speech Yeah, and he goes, dude, I'm married. He's like, are you trying to get me laid or something? <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. And, and, and one other funny thing about him was that he, he came to the groomsman lunch. He's very successful. He's wonderful. He's very generous. And and my I didn't have like a groomsman gift for you guys, which mm. I you know you're supposed to have. So my intention was to just pay for that big lunch for everybody. Mm. And without me realizing it, he quietly oh, fucking yeah. took the bill and just took it down himself. And when we all found out that he had done that, we all as a group started booing him. <laughs> We were all like, boo. boo. <laughs> and it was like, imagine taking down the bill for an entire lunch of 12 dudes that all had like four or five cocktails, multiple fancy dishes, oysters, all that, and getting booed for it. <laughs> what a perfect response. It was so great. That was funny. Dude, I have to mention the Sierra is my boy line Hillary th gave to wow. me. She gave you that? Oh. Because I had some version of that, but Hillary was like, what if you say? Yeah. And I was like, ooh, that is good, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, dude, I, I, so after the speech was over or whatever, I like go up to the bar, I order a drink, and the bartender was like, a oh, good speech. And I was like, oh, thanks. He goes, it was a little long. Wow. And I was like, you fucker. Yeah, what a thing to say. I didn't think that at all. Naturally, I thought about that for the entire night, and yeah. I'm still thinking about That's it, obviously. That's crazy, dude. We, I didn't think any of the speeches were too long. You, you know, gave me a range yeah. that I adhere to because you, I have a video of the speech. And you know the time, you know your timing. Yeah. 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 Um yeah, I, I don't that's that he's wrong if he said that. And <laughs> you know, you. I don't know you. why. But by the way, you know, we had it. um 96 people at the wedding. Our wedding planner told us uh the next day that um that catering company said it was the most booze they'd ever <laughs> served at a wedding ever. Whoa. They had they had enough booze for a wedding of 300, and we drank all of it. And, bro, it wasn't even that big of a wedding. We had all of the booze. That's crazy, dude. I, I remember, like, I, I was thinking, I, I probably had, like, I don't know, fucking 13 or 14 tequila sodas that night. I drank a shit ton. Because I was dancing my fucking face yeah, off. Yeah, you were, dude. I didn't I even know you had moves like going, that, dude. I just wanted to leave it all out there. You were letting it rip. Yeah. You and Ryan were both crushing. Ryan, the, the, the boys! The boys <laughs> were dancing. The boys Ryan were was flying around. Really funky night. Yeah, real funky night. Real funky. Ah, it was good. It was real good, funky. Ryan. I like that. A lot of funk. The lot funk, of funk. Is, gets you going. I it like really the funk. It really does, dude. Um, band was great. They were great. Oh. And then they like everyone picked me up and would throw me up to the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I missed that. Oh. I was really upset. I like went to the bathroom at the ultimate wrong time. That's I okay. That's okay. Hoisting. Let me tell you something though. 
you got to throw the guy at the wedding. <laughs> you got to. It is the best part of every wedding. And we're going to throw you hey. at your wedding. And if people aren't willing, I'm going to do it myself. I'll be lifting uh, around that time. I'll make sure we can do it. Being thrown at your wedding is the best. It's, dude, you feel I'm, like you won the World Cup. Did they get your dad again? They oh, did, they right? got my yeah. dad. My dad wanted it. He loves he was, it. It was like a little toddler like putting his arms up, being like, oh, no, they're not going to get me, are they? <laughs> <laughs> he talked about it earlier in the day, and we've talked about it on an old episode, how yeah. he secretly loves to be hoisted. Loves to be up in the air, <laughs> breathing that. that clean mountain air. Um, yeah, he. we had a blast. Uh, the wedding was just great. Danced the whole time. Was sweating through my suit. Um, you know, had had a lot of cake. Ate the mm. food was really good, to really your point. Really fucking good. The yeah. cake was really good. Oh, the cake was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And also then some, like, bags of sort of, like, artisanal popcorn came oh, out yeah. and grilled cheeses oh. which i missed oh, and I miss as i missed too. the grilled cheeses abba's like dude i've eaten five <laughs> so I was like, god damn it you dog <laughs> rubbing yeah. it in yeah uh yeah that was really great and uh yeah just a really memorable wonderful and then we <laughs> then you know we had to shut the wedding down 11 o'clock outdoors noise issues whatever like that was the time it was supposed to end but then we had shuttles that we were supposed to have lined up to bring us back into Portland to do like an after party. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the shuttle system got like a little screwed up. So we just had like a block party in our driveway. <laughs> and someone brought out a speaker and we were just throwing down on the dirt driveway in the woods. At which point my dad texted me and was like, hey, any chance you could shut it down? You know, the neighbors are like kind of getting uh, a little antsy. And I'm like, Dad, it's my wedding. Tell them to go fuck themselves. <laughs> um, finally, the shuttles came. We got into Portland and we went to this sort of bar lounge place. I didn't I'd never been to before. And that place was going off. Yeah, dude. I was having a blast. I took some shots down with the boys. Yeah. We were fucking funking it up again. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty multicolored lighted dance floor. It was awesome. Totally. Um, went back to the hotel and passed out. And then that was the wedding. Yeah, dude. Chris, uh, Ryan, and myself were on the same shuttle back, oh, and we were just God. pumping Bad Bunny. Dude. You got Ryan. Addicted. I got Ryan into Bad Bunny, apparently. So so you were oh, on boy. Ogs, and yeah. you started playing Bad Bunny. And I know you're a big fan. I haven't been that familiar with most of his music. Francis, when the bass dropped, so did Julio's butt. <laughs> and it it bounced so hard that it just it, I'm in love with Bad Bunny now. Oh. It's fantastic. You were so on cue. You were rapping it. It was fantastic. Great memory. I'm glad nice. I'm glad in the car. It. Oh, it was on the, the shuttle. A bus. On the shuttle yeah. and Hill Dog singing with Julio word for word, not missing a word. Damn. All in Spanish. Yeah. All in Spanish. Uh, she's yeah. got. She's become quite good. Shit. It was, it was so cool. It was really that fun. is cool. It was, so cool. it was really fun. Ah, oh, cool. Dude, another really funny. Uh, this is, could be like, Chris, you could literally use this on like a business card or something. Because like at one point we were trying to take a photo and all the guys were taking terrible fucking photos. And Chris goes, give me the phone. And Chris takes a great photo. And Hillary's like, like created a riddle. She's like, how many guys does it take to take a picture? She's like, zero. You need a girl or Chris? <laughs> 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 Dude, that's pretty good. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, Chris Which is, implies that Chris is not a boy somehow. No, Chris transcends gender am, when it comes I to I am photo. the boy. He's oh. the boy. And, yeah. Correct. You know, they like he's the boy. The boys, boy. yeah. plant um, boy, salmon boy. Now I'm the boy. You're the boy. <laughs> Correct. The plant boy and the salmon boy. Delicious and good looking plants. All right. A couple things. The bar. OK, so first, of all, I want to talk about Portland a little bit as a city. Mm. Very odd place. You think so? So I felt as if the people in the town felt as if the town had been overrun by tourists. Probably do. But like there were not that many people there. Like we'd go into a, like we went to a restaurant the next day and try to get a table, and the guy's like, "I'm sorry, like we got." And then he starts he starts doing like inside baseball talk. He's like, "I only got two four tops left." <laughs> I'm like, "Dude, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but there's no one in this restaurant." <laughs> and then one of your friends start being starts like explaining to him. He's like, "You have more customers, you make more money." Oh, dude, he no. starts doing the like wise oh, guy New York thing, wow. and the guy's like, "Are you serious?" 
He's like, it's very simple. It's very simple. And his, his wife's like, all right, honey, come on. I know exactly who that <laughs> friend is. <laughs> so that was great. But then, dude, there was also this, like, funny, like, tension in the air where, like, you'd be walking down the street and guys would start chirping at you. And you couldn't tell if they were fucking with you or if they, like, wanted to fight or if they wanted to be friends. Mm. Like, I walked by a guy. So, first of all, we're the guys in the suits going to, like, the bars. Mm-hmm. So, like, you're always going to get a little bit of heat for that with, like, the people who are dressed normal. And I walk by some guy. He goes, nice suit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude. And then I go, really? And he goes, yeah, it's actually really nice. I was like, <laughs> I was like thanks, dude. Like, that was the weirdest compliment I've ever yeah. gotten in my life. Like, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Yeah. That was the exact It's tone. almost like he changed his mind halfway through <laughs> about what he wanted. And by the way, that's what I've experienced in Portland. Yeah. And, and to your point about being overrun by tourists, it's a strange town in that well, it's it's like many where I would say that the population of people are on a given weekend who are in the city in Portland in August is probably four times what it is in from October got through it, got May. It, got it. So for so long, the city is theirs and restaurant right. reservations are easy to come by. Right. And coffee lines are short and all of that. What a beautiful city, by the way. Stunning. Stunning. Stunning city. Furthest it, north I've been in New England. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you went to Freeport for the wedding, so that was a little further north. Okay, so yeah, Freeport. A little farther north, excuse me. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, we walked by the place where I got beat up by those lobstermen all those years oh, yeah. ago. Where you fell off the dock as well. Yeah, showed you guys we that. We saw all of Francis's trauma. Yeah, it was like a walking <laughs> tour of Oops the Podcast. Dark yeah. tourism of Francis's yeah. life. <laughs> it was funny because me and Ryan were driving up and we saw all these little places and we're like, what? It's so weird. We know all these yeah. names. Yeah. Just yeah. To like put a face to it. It was so funny. It was oh, crazy. Restaurant. What was that restaurant? The Muddy Rudder. 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 That's something. I think I said once rudder. that like all these kids in high school that used to bully me were now washing dishes yeah. at the muddy rudder. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was the line I used. <laughs> the old muddy rudder, dude. The bar that we went to for the after party. Which, first of all, this is funny. Like there were the shuttle bus, like. It felt almost like a situation where, like, you're letting the women and children go first. Yeah. Like, and specifically because, like, you know, we work together. I feel like I need to let everybody go before Mm -hmm. I go, Mm -hmm. which is a fun thing. So we, like, got to the bar a slightly late, but not too late to experience the, like, joys of it. They had the music video of the song that was playing, Mm -hmm. playing. What a nice touch. Mm. If you're opening a bar and you want people to have fun, play old songs with the music video. What a fucking joy. Or new songs. Any song. Yeah. Made it, like, I would say 50% more fun. Totally. Totally. I was having a blast. I had a really really good time all the way through that day. It was a a day where, you know me, (laughs) I run out of steam. (laughs) <laughs> and then I need to go home. Mm-hmm. I did not need to go home. I did not need to go home. I started drinking at, you know, 11 a.m. <laughs> I think I could have continued drinking and dancing and having a great time well into the the following day. Yeah. You know, I was sad The the bar closes at one in the morning. I, I, I would have loved to have gone till two at least. Yeah. It's always nice, dude. Places like I remember when I was in Boston and I used to bitch about how like the bars would close early or whatever. Like it is nice to end to be forced to end the night early enough to be able to like do an after party if you want or be done. Yeah, it is nice. Like 4 a.m. is just like if you're going out till 4 a.m. and then you want to do more things after your life is going to be altered. True. (laughs) True. I think it's a good governor when you're 20 to 28. But after that, yeah, I don't have, you know, most people shouldn't have too much of a problem self-regulating. Oh, it's two 30. Like let's go home where occasionally every once in a blue moon (laughs) to have the option of being out till you know, three or four. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. I haven't done it in a long time, though. Um, Chris, I that? had a fun little observation I oh, want to please, tell you guys Chris, about that please. you don't know about. So there was a cocktail hour. I don't even know if you mentioned that. It was lovely overlooking mm. the water, and there was a oyster bar with yes. unlimited oysters. Oh, shuckery. Yeah. And boy, let me tell you, Ryan Lynch loves <laughs> oysters. Does he? 
does I've he? I've never seen somebody take down so many oysters. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> to the point where his girlfriend was getting mad at him because he was eating all of them. Buddy, buddy, this is crazy. I legitimately had 50 oysters. I was eating them like they were potato chips. This further just affirms the fact that he is my son. And the two of you are related somehow. Uh, uh, well, tell me what you what you thought. Nothing. I may have matched you on that. I love oysters. Uh, my girlfriend's dad has an oyster guy, so whenever we go to cookouts and stuff, always have oysters. I love them. It got to the point where my girlfriend was getting really pissed off because you guys haven't come yet, and she's like, she's like Ryan, like you're eating all of the oysters. Like, you need to stop. You're embarrassing me. I like interrupted a conversation she was having with two people, and I was like, I'm gonna get some oysters. That killed the conversation and got her pissed. And then we were at the bar. I think it was me, Chris, my girlfriend, and a couple other people. We were chatting. And she told me prior to this conversation, she's like, no more oysters. Like, you're going to get me mad. Oh my Quiet God. and and very direct. And so I was like, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. And then, and then she was like, oh, I'll go with you. But I was just saying that because I wanted her to continue talking and then I could go get oysters. And so then I told her, I was like, I actually don't have to go to the bathroom because it was a little bit of a walk. And I wasn't feeling like playing that charade with her. I was like, I just want to let me have a few more. <laughs> they were delicious. Oh God, Damn, dude. I'm so sorry someone oysters. held you back from eating all the oysters because you know what happened was that once everyone filed up to the tent, uh, Sierra and I were left behind at that area all by ourselves to wait, kind of. Uh -huh. And I noticed that there were probably 48 more oysters. And I started eating them. And I thought, well, my Shirley, uh, I just want to eat enough where we don't feel bad that we have to throw a bunch out. Mm -hmm. Buddy, I finished them. Whoa. I'm telling you, I'm I'm telling That's, you, I ate, I that ate sounds over, amazing. over 50 oysters, and and I got to the point where I wasn't even dressing them anymore. I stopped adding the mignonette. I stopped <laughs> adding the vinegar. Mm -hmm. I wasn't doing. I was just taking them down like potato chips. There was a nice assortment too. Yeah, dude. It, all right, is this completely wrong of me to think? But or is like eating that many oysters? Does it like increase the risk of like complications? In any capacity? I, I, I would have thought my stomach would not have been happy um, as a result of eating 50 plus oysters yeah. in in very <laughs> short period of time. But I was fine. Yeah. yeah. I think it's probably just a, a food that, you know, is safe to eat. Yeah, I think so too. Like, I know that, like, and I don't know if it's my parents being, like, overly cautious. They always used to, like, warn me about oysters, which is, like, ridiculous. Like, it's mm. bullshit. Like, you hear a story of, like, oh, bad oyster or whatever. But, like... I don't know to what degree, to your point, it's like, that's like a one in a million thing. Yeah. Maybe not one in a million, but you know what I mean? So like eating 50 or one doesn't like really matter. Right. Right. All right. Real quick. We want to shout out one of our listeners, our buddy, Greg Bourne. Uh, mm. He's fighting the good fight with Hodgkin's lymphoma right now. His birthday's coming up. Um, we just wanted to wish him all the best. Yeah. Greg's the man. He's the listener of the pod. Uh, great fucking dude. And uh, we wish you well, Greg. Keep yeah, fighting bro. the good fight, my friend. Yeah, good luck, and uh, yeah, hopefully you're uh, feeling better soon, man. Yeah, and you know, it doesn't have to be all all sad, Greg, you know? I bet you're a scoundrel. <laughs> I, bet I bet you're, you're a, a rascal. I bet you're a dog. I bet you're a rascal, you old Greg. Greg, if I know you as well <laughs> as I think I do, you're a rascal. Sure are. So can't wait to be seeing you back at your rascally ways. Yes, Greg. Hopefully we look forward to being allowed to say bad things about you again. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> feel better man yeah um all right ryan what do you got buddy okay facts with ryan facts with ryan were they lying or were they crying facts with ryan <laughs> all right <laughs> monarch butterflies live up to about five weeks but some live up to nine months oh wow. Wow. that's crazy the episode where michael <laughs> scott gets roasted is in season five it's the first time there's a two-parter on The Office, uh, uh, episodes 14 and 15, called Stress Relief. Mm. Wow. Some people develop <laughs> hoarding disorders after experiencing a stressful <laughs> life event that they had a difficult time coping with. It's a shame. <laughs> and the world record for oyster eating is 46 dozen in 10 minutes. It was set in 2005 at an event by Sonia the Black Win... Uh, Sonia, the Black Widow Thomas. Mm. Oh, shucks. Oh, shucks. That's a lot. Very 46 nice. dozen. Jeez. Jesus Christ, dude. I can't even. What is that? How many is that? It's 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 well over 500. No, it's like 552. Six, wow. Yeah. Jesus Christ. 552. Jesus. 
Um, all right, Francis, what do you got coming up? Uh, I don't know that I have much at the moment. Uh, I, I'm, I'm so sorry, by the way, to anyone in uh, Greenville or Charlotte. I had to cancel those dates. Um, I will probably be rescheduling those uh, shows for sometime in the new year. So I'll be coming back. And uh, sorry to everyone who bought tickets to that, but we'll make it happen. Sweet. I'm in um, Wise Guys in West Jordan, Utah, October 14th and 15th. Um, I'm at the Evening Muse in Charlotte, North Carolina, October 20th. And then November 12th, The Blind Pig in Ann Arbor. Love to see you guys at one of those shows. That's all. Bye-bye. That's it. Bye.